So as expected, we got a massive patch right here before the drop of Shadow of the Erd Tree. Patch 1.12 has just hit all platforms and it is a massive one. So we're going to go over everything in this patch. Per usual, I will leave the patch notes down in the description below so you guys can go check them out for yourself. But just so you're aware, the Blasphemous Blade did finally receive a nerf, so let's get into it. So as far as the new features go, we have added support for Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC, as that's dropping tonight. We also have the five new hairstyles we've already talked about. There's new added map functions. There's going to be new summoning pool features. Active summoning pools will now be carried over into New Game Plus, which is awesome. And individual summoning pools can now be enabled slash disabled in a newly added map functions menu, which is super cool. We also got some new inventory features. Newly obtained items will have an exclamation point right next to them which i think is incredibly helpful there's also going to be a recent items tab which is great and then for your display settings you can change those in the display tab menu and finally one of the best things to come out in any elden ring patch we can finally summon our spectral steed torrent in the elden beast boss battle I cannot tell you how excited I am for this. That boss fight absolutely sucks. And now that we can fight on horseback, it's going to be a lot better. Another quality of life change happens in the Colosseums, where crafted consumable items that you use during battle will then be replenished into your inventory after you leave the Colosseum. This is a massive, awesome quality of life change, and I'm definitely excited about it. Next up, we have some PvP balancing adjustment, where they went through and tweaked a whole bunch of weapons and skills. So I'm going to go over the ones that I think should be highlighted the most. But as I said earlier, you are going to be able to check the description for all of these patch notes if you want to go check out more in detail. First up, after being affected by madness or sleep, the status effect buildup will be halted for a short period of time, which honestly is a great quality of life change. They're also increasing the poise damage of some attacks against other players for the following weapon types. That's going to be great swords, colossal swords, curved great swords, great axes, hammers, flails, great hammers, colossal weapons, great spears, and halberds. So some really nice quality of life changes happening there. They're adjusting poise damage from some dual wield attacks against other players for the following weapon types great swords axes great axes hammers great hammers halberds and reapers they're also going to be increasing poise damage against other players from dual wielded attacks of the following weapon types axes hammers halberds and reapers now we're also getting some nerfs to some of the weapon types by decreased poise damage of some attacks against other players for daggers straight swords thrusting swords heavy thrusting swords curved swords katanas twin blades axes spears reapers whips fists and claws they're also decreasing the damage of some attacks against players for heavy thrusting sword weapon types they're decreasing the damage of dual wield attacks against other players from the following weapon types as well spears and great spears which is kind of nice because the dual spear moveset in pvp is crazy and they're also decreasing the effects of the baldican blessing and radiant baldican blessing to increase the poise value of physical damage negation in pvp we're getting a bunch of nerfs across the entire board spinning slash flaming strike rain of arrows curse blood slash transient moonlight lightning storm spectral ritual Ancient Lightning Spear, Radon's Rain, Spinning Weapon are all getting decreased damage across the board. They're also nerfing a little bit two of the incantations, Black Flame's protection by decreasing the physical block rate, as well as Beastal Sling, decreasing its poise damage. We also got some great general balancing adjustments, and these are going to affect everything from PvE to PvP, all encompassing everything. They've adjusted the turning speed when using dual-wielded heavy thrusting swords. We've got an increased dexterity scaling when assigned Ashes of War with a core corresponding weapon affinities which is super awesome increased stamina consumption when guarding against attacks from the following weapon types great swords curved swords great axes and great hammers they've increased the speed of some attacks for the following weapon types axes great axes hammers flails and reapers i'm actually really excited about this one because i love using axes and they already had a very fast swing speed so i'm really curious to see how this plays out they've increased the damage of charge attacks from the following weapon types axes great axes some colossal weapons as well i think this is going to be really awesome for the warped axe heavy charged r2 they've increased the turning attacks with normal attacks of the reaper weapon type they've increased whip weapon damage except for the Urumi. whips definitely needed a little bit of a buff so this is exciting they've increased the speed of consecutive attacks for the following weapon types light bows and long bows it is about time that bows saw some love in elden ring they have been so bad for so long i'm really stoked to see how they're going to be performing in the dlc they've also increased the poise damage of torches which okay that's cool they've increased the duration 
duration of the effect of Moog's Great Rune and increase the attack power when bleeding status effect is triggered by a nearby summon spirit, which is cool. They've decreased the heal amount reduction from the Flask of Crimson Tears and increased the heal on attack effect when using Melania's Rune. This actually is awesome because there was almost no point in using that Great Rune, but now that we're getting a little bit of a buff to it, this is definitely going to benefit a lot of people. They've increased the attack power of arrows, great arrows, bolts, and great bolts that can be crafted through item crafting. This is also super awesome. It just builds on bows getting a buff, and increased attack power of arrows is always going to be a great thing for that. They've decreased the turning speed of dual wielding weapons for the following weapon types, spears and great spears. They've decreased the poise generation speed of some attacks following weapon types, great spears and halberds. Terra Magica caught a nerf as well as a Cerulean hidden tier. They've decreased the effect that increases the power of spells within Terra Magica, and they've decreased Increase the effect of the duration of the Cerulean Hidden Tier. And now we get to see what weapons are going to be great going into the DLC and what weapons caught an absolute nerf that are not necessarily going to be as viable as they once were. Starting out in our armament adjustments, the Troll Knight Sword got increased damage, the Zamor Curve Sword got increased damage, and increased movement distance of some attacks, the Forked Hatchet got increased damage, the Ripple Blade caught a little bit of a nerf and they decreased the status buildup enhancement that scales with the Arcane Attribute, Serpent Hunter got a buff, increased the speed of crouching attacks. The Ripple Crescent Halberd also caught the same nerf as the Ripple Blade. Three staffs got buffs. The Albanaric Staff, the Gelmir Glintstone Staff, and the Prince of Death Staff all got increased attribute scaling. The Golden Order Seal and Claw Mark Seal, as well as the Dragon Communion Seal, all got increased attribute scaling as well. Now, as far as these skill adjustments like Ashes of War and Special Weapon Skills, Kick got an increased amount of poise damage when using it. Spinning Slash caught a nerf, and they decreased the status buildup of your weapon when using this skill. Storm Assault, Storm Collar, and Storm Stomp all got decreased poise generation speed. Glintstone Phalanx got a nerf decreasing its poise damage. Loretta's Slash and Bloody Slash both caught nerfs decreasing the poise generation speed. Strong Shot got an increase to the speed of some attacks. Sky Shot got increased the speed when doing consecutive attacks. And Enhanced Shot also got increased the speed of some attacks. They've buffed a few of the Shield Ashes of War. But what's super sad is Taker's Flame now has decreased fire poise damage, and they have removed the fire's knockdown effect, aka the Blasphemous Blade caught a huge nerf. It will be very interesting to see how viable this weapon is now that you're not knocking an enemy over every single time you use its Ash of War, so I'm really curious about this. We've also received a little bit of a balance to the Moonlight Greatsword. They've increased the poise damage of the heavy and charged attacks, but they've decreased the poise damage generated from the magic wave, which does make sense overall. Thundercloud form on the Dragon King's Cragblade has received a nerf, decreasing the poise damage. Thunderstorm from the Stormhawk Axe has also received decreased damage, which is sad. And for those of us who love using the Envoy's Longhorn, the Bubble Shower has gotten a nerf, and they have decreased the damage and poise damage received from that Ash of War, which is super, super sad. I Command the Anil got a little bit of a balance adjustment. They increased the poise value during the active part of the skill, but they've decreased the poise generation speed. Bear Witness got a buff, increasing its damage and poise damage, and with Contagious Fury, they've decreased the amount of attack power generated by this skill. The rest of this patch has just been assorted bug fixes, and like I said, I will leave this entire patch notes down in the description of the video below, so if you want to go check those out and you're curious about those bug fixes, there are a lot of them, and I'm not going to go through every single one, so you guys can go check that out for yourself. But that is all for the patch. I'm super excited to get into this DLC. Finally, we are finally here so with that being said guys make sure to subscribe on your way out if you enjoyed the video leave a comment down below of what you're most excited for and until next time guys stay safe enjoy the game then i'll see you in the next one